the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences 25th Annual Academy Award. The first movie to win an Oscar was called Wings. Since then, a quarter century has gone by and there have been many, many changes. Motion pictures passing from silent black and white eloquence through the barrier to sound and color stand today on the threshold of even wider horizons. Like the streaking jet plane, the Academy Award ceremony itself has been streamlined, has become a major news event, originating tonight on two coasts of a great continent and beamed around the globe. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you are looking west on Hollywood Boulevard. Perhaps population changes have swung the motion picture industry away from this historic street somewhat, but it will always remain a little bit of nostalgia and memory, something like 42nd Street and Broadway. Here are the stands, and there is the marquee. Down there in front of the theater, a group of people still coming in, Tony Curtis and Janet Lee, Margin Gower champion, Leslie Caron and her husband, Mr. Hormel. This is the big night that everyone has waited for, ladies and gentlemen, out here in the motion picture industry. We're having some unusual California weather, but then we're the home of unusual weather, so we're not too surprised. And now on into the Pantages. The house lights are already down, and here is the Academy Awards Orchestra playing the first Oscar-winning tune, The Continental. Award winner Adolf Deutsch conducting. <laughs> is the world's most glamorous audience, nearly 3,000 strong, all waiting to see the Oscars handed out, and almost all are either rooting for friends or keeping their fingers crossed for themselves. Perhaps if you look closely in there, you can see some of your favorites of the screen. Most of the nominees will be present. Some, of course, as you've heard, are in, are in New York. I see Merle Oberon sitting down there just to the right corner of the screen. I'm looking just as you are, trying to find some of the people I might point out, but perhaps you out there looking have already chosen your favorite and seen them someplace there in the audience. Well, some of the audience has already found out they're being photographed also. President of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, Mr. Charles Brackett. Hello, Mary.
members of the Academy, guests, friends everywhere, welcome to this very special birthday. In honor of the occasion, all the presenters tonight are to be Academy Award winners. A miniature Oscar was once voted to a man for his very special services to the Academy as a master of ceremonies. He's to be our master of ceremonies tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bob Hope. Thank you very much, Mr. Brackett. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the set. I am very, very, very happy to be here at the Academy Awards 25th Annual Award Show. Probably the most exciting giveaway. Now, I want to thank all the rest of you for your time. So we can give these awards. Just shows you there's nothing that one group of actors won't do for another. As Mr. Bra Brackett pointed out, this is a wedding of this great entertainment medium with our most interested in television. And that Oscar, 25 years old, is high time to get married. While it's true that he has a child bride, the comfort of hope is getting loaded. In fact, the bride's father is picking up the tab for this wedding. But isn't it exciting to know that a lot of these glamorous stars are going to be in your home tonight? All over America, housewives are turning to their husbands and saying, put on your shirt, Joan Crawford is coming. Television, that's where movies go when they die. television watchers will see movie stars you've never seen before. New faces like Mary Pickford, Janet Gaynor, Ronald Coleman, and Gene Herschel. I hope you will give these youngsters the same welcome you give your current favorites. Theda Barrett, George Arliss, Elmo Lincoln. Clive Brook, Lia Putty, and Francis X. Bushman. After all, I'm not here to deliver on television because you can't ignore an industry that has brought fame to Chef Milani, fortune to Hopalong Cassidy, and perpetual youth to the Bowery Boys. Just imagine how Leo Gorsi's kid must feel watching TV and finding out his old man is younger than he is. Don't get me wrong, television is wonderful. Today you can sit home and uh, see Broadway shows, go to church in your own living room. You don't have to go outside for anything. I was born on a farm where you have to go outside for everything. <laughs> but some movie companies are still stubborn about recognizing television. Jack Warner still refers to TV as that furniture that stares back. <laughs> But movies are still your best entertainment. It's all movies, ladies and gentlemen. And it'll always be your best entertainment. If you don't think so, ask Joe DiMaggio. <laughs> you don't see him going out with Kukla, Fran, and Ali. <laughs> but I want to say for the country that this is a big night for Hollywood. I've never seen so many Cadillacs, mink coats, diamonds, emeralds, rubies, ermine wraps. It looks like a PTA meeting in Texas. <laughs> And it's a gay, handsome crowd here tonight, but there's an undercurrent of nervousness. The whole thing is like a big maternity ward. Everybody's expecting. And keep your eyes on the losers tonight. There'll be applause for winners. You'll see great understanding, great sportsmanship, great acting. take it pretty hard. Last year, one actor tried to kill himself by jumping off Jerry Cooper. <laughs> Fortunately, my parachute opened just in time. But I have the master's ceremonies of five or six of them in Paris, and I get a big kick out of it. Of course, I like to be here just in case. 
you never tell. Some year there might be one left over. Look at those houses. Isn't that so huh? Looks like Betty Davis's garage. <laughs> Now, I think it's rather silly. I mean, all this fuss about winning one of those Oscars. What are they? Just a bookend with a sneer. <laughs> Don't glare at me, you never down Stevenson buttons. <laughs> but I want to tell you, this is the last year that the statuette will be presented in this form. Next year, it'll be wearing glasses. <laughs> Everything in Hollywood is decided over third dimension. It's the biggest thing to hit the movie since Cecil B. DeMille began rewriting the Bible. And it's hard to say... <laughs> it's hard to say what effect three-dimensional pictures will have on the world. The next generation of children may be born with square eyeballs. <laughs> I just want to say that we've, uh, we're ready to go for our regular show. And first in line for a big credit tonight is our producer and director of this anniversary show two-time award winner and governor of the Academy, Mr. Johnny Green. I just want to say... I just want to say the Academy is very lucky to have a man of this talent today. Uh, this is the kind of a job that demands a lot of know-how, believe me. Look at that birthday cake. Isn't that a pretty thing, huh? Over here, there you are. That was my head, wasn't it? Look at that birthday cake. I haven't seen anything that pretty since Hedda Hopper wore it. I think it's a beautiful thing. Before we get started, here in uh, Hollywood, we're all trapped in the ship. We're going to New York. Where one of our past presidents of the Academy, Conrad Nagel, is handling everything at that end. Let's switch over. Let's go and see what's going on in New York. Thank you, and all of us here in New York send our greetings to you in California. Across 3,000 miles of space through the wonders of television, this is all very cozy, Bob. We received a last-minute telegram from Johnny Green. Oh, and incidentally, we send our heartiest congratulations to Johnny for the wonderful job he's done producing this show. But this last-minute telegram from Johnny refers to Freddie March and me as the New York pickups. Now, if you don't mind, we'd like to change that to the New York cut-ins. Uh, Johnny also suggests that we keep the New York end of it as brief as possible, which I will endeavor to do. Bob, we're trying to do uh, a great a Hollywood premiere in New York here as possible. Columbus Circle is lined with searchlights. There are thousands of people out there. Incidentally, we have California weather here, too. It's pouring rain. The police are holding the crowds back. We want to swing around and see a bit of our audience here. There are a few empty seats in the theater, which are being held for the nominees who are playing in Broadway shows and will arrive just as soon as their curtains come down. Now, in keeping with Johnny's suggestion that we keep this brief in New York, I'd like to present the gentleman who is going to give out any of the awards that are won here in New York. Himself, the holder of two Academy Awards, Mr. Freddie March. Ready? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings. Greetings to Bob Hope and to all the contestants on the West Coast, and we can only hope sincerely that we may possibly have one or two here in the East. I'm not a contestant. And if our time weren't limited, Conrad and I would make a lot of very bad jokes, but we have been told to make it very, very short. Thank you very much. Good luck to the West Coast. Good luck to all the contestants. And now we'll go back to Hollywood and to Bob Holt. Bob, it's all yours. Thank you, Conrad and Frederick March. We'll see you later in the program. We must keep it moving, ladies and gentlemen. I must start immediately. Five tunes have been nominated for this year's Oscar in songwriting. We have an Academy Award winning actress to sing the first one, Miss Celeste Holm and Thumbelina. <laughs> Thumbelina, tiny little thing. Thumbelina, dance. Thumbelina, sing. Oh, Thumbelina, what's the difference if you're very small? When your heart is full of love, you're nine feet tall. Oh, you're no bigger than my thumb, than my thumb, than my thumb. Sweet Thumbelina. 
Now don't be gliding. No, no, no. Ah, ah, ah. Come, come, go. Thumbelina, Thumbelina, tiny little thing. Thumbelina, dance. Thumbelina, sing. Oh, what's the difference, Thumbelina, if you're very small? When your heart is full of love, you're nine feet tall. Than my toe, than my toe, than my toe. Sweet Thumbelina, keep that glow. And you'll grow, and you'll grow, and you'll grow. Thumbelina, Thumbelina, tiny little thing. Thumbelina, dance, Thumbelina, sing. Oh, what's the difference, Thumbelina, that you're very small? With RCA Victor's new 45 extended play records, you can enjoy almost two hours of your favorite music at a single flick of a switch. These little records are taking the whole country by storm. Over a million have been sold in the past few weeks. And no wonder, they're durable. You can bend them or drop them. They just won't break. And they're easy to store. You can fit 150 into just one foot of shelf space. And best of all, they give you double the music for less money. Fifteen minutes to the record. And here's the instrument that plays these records as they were designed to be played. RCA Victor's own Victrola 45 attachment. It's the simplest automatic changer ever made. Because the mechanism is inside this large center spindle. Look. Load up to 14 records at a time. Press a button. And you're set for nearly two hours of wonderful music. Of course, if you're one of the people who have records in all three speeds, you'll enjoy owning this Victrola three-speed automatic changer. It plays your 78s and long play records on this standard spindle. And for 45 records, you just slip on the same type of large spindle that you find on the Victrola 45 player. Whether you prefer a 45 or a three-speed player, remember, only RCA Victor makes the Victrola. So choose the one designed for your record collection. Prices start at only $16.75. See your RCA Victor dealer tomorrow. Yes, here we are back in Hollywood for the Academy Awards of 52. Before we go ahead, I think our audience would like to know how the voting for awards operates. The membership of nearly 2,000 cast their votes, which are tabulated by the accounting firm of Price Waterhouse. At this moment, the winners are known to only one man, a representative of that firm, Mr. Francis Holford, who has all the dope in a stack of envelopes back there near the Oscars. In case you're skeptical, all the Oscars on stage are blank tonight. So are those in New York. They'll be engraved tomorrow, and it doesn't do any good to work on Mr. Holford. He can't be had. Some experts have tried, and the price is never right for Waterhouse. <laughs> I found that out. Now for the Costume Design Awards, they'll be presented by an Academy Award-winning actress. Remember Kitty Foyle? Here's Miss Ginger Rogers. Those nominated for the best achievement in costume design of a black and white production are a fair in Trinidad, Beckworth, Columbia, Jean-Louis, The Bad and the Beautiful, MGM, Helen Rose, Carrie, Paramount, Edith Head, My Cousin Rachel, 20th Century Fox, Charles Lemaire, and Dorothy Jenkins, Sudden Fear, Hoffman, RKO, Sheila O'Brien. The winner is Helen Rose for The Bad and the Beautiful.
wants to know which way she goes out. No. <laughs> you can go out. You can go back, darling, and go out anyway. <laughs> Those nominated for the best achievement in costume design of a color production are The Greatest Show on Earth, DeMille, Paramount, Edith Head, Dorothy Jenkins, and Miles White, Hans Christian Andersen, Goldwyn, RKO, Clave, Mary Wills, and Madame Kerenska, The Merry Widow, MGM, Helen Rose, and Steel Guile, Style Steel, forgive me, Moulin Rouge, Romulus, United Artists, Marcel Bertel, for the song in my heart, 20th Century Fox, Charles Lemaire, and the winner is Marcel Verte. <laughs> Miss Rogers. They could have at least said thanks. <laughs> to present the awards for distinctive achievement in documentary productions, our past president and holder of two honorary Academy Awards, Mr. Gene Herschel. Those nominated for distinctive achievement in documentary production, short subjects are Devil Take Us, Theater of Life Production, Robert Morgan, The Garden Spider, Cristallo, IFA, Italian, Alberto Ancilotto, Man Alive, United Productions of America for American Cancer Society, Stephen Bososto, and Naples. National Film Board of Canada, Mayor Kingsley, Norman McLaren. The winner is... In the absence of the winner, Mr. Duke Lewis, the Canadian Trade Commissioner, will accept the award, Neighbors. <laughs> nominated for distinctive achievement in documentary production features are the hoaxers Metro Golden Mayor Glory Sherry, Navajo Bartlett Foster and Lippert Productions, Paul Bartlett, and the Sea Around Us, RKO Urban Allen. The winner is the Sea Around Us. Dr. Christian. I knew him when he was going to medical school with Joyce Jordan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Daniels is really insurance when he plays the nightclub. He has caused riots in every champagne parlor from Bangor to San Diego. And he's here tonight to sing the second nominated song, Billy Daniels and Because You're Mine. <laughs> Because you're mine The brightest star I see Looks down my love and end Because you're mine Because you're mine 
Because your mind, the breeze and how it fly becomes your melody and why. Because your mind, because your mind, I only know that as long as I may live. You alone may give me the key. That is wonderful. It's only my poor heart to hear, and it's a pity. Because you're mine, I only know that as long as I believe, I only live for the kiss that you alone. If you win one Oscar, you're good. If you win two, you're greedy. If you win three, you're Frank Capra. Here to present the award for film editing, director Frank Capra. The nominations for Best Achievement in Film Editing. Come Back, Little Sheba, Hal Wallace, Paramount, Warren Lowe, Flat Top Monogram, William Austin, The Greatest Show on Earth, The Mill, Paramount, Annie Balkins, High Noon, Kramer, United Artists, Elmo Williams and Harry Gerstad, Moulin Rouge, Romulus, United Artists, Ralph Kemplin. The winner is, the winners are Elmo Williams and Harry Gerstad for High Noon. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Frank Capra. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, to present the awards for art direction and set direction, we have a brace of award winners, Joan Fontaine and Jimmy Stewart. Nominated for the best achievement in art direction of a black and white production are The Bad and the Beautiful, MGM, Cedric Gibbons, and Edward Carfango. Set direction, Edward B. Willis and Keo Gleason. Carrie, Paramount, Hal Pereira, and Roland Anderson. Set direction, Emil Curie. My cousin Rachel, 20th Century Fox, Lyle Wheeler, and John DeCure. Set decoration, Walter M. Scott. Rachel Morton, 
Dai RKO Japanese Matsuyama. Set decoration, uh, Matsumoto. Viva Zapata, 20th Century Fox. Lyle Wheeler and Leland Fuller. Set decoration, Thomas Little and Claude Carpenter. The winner is Cedric Gibbons and Edward Calsango, Edwin B. Willis, and Keo Gleason. For the bad and the beautiful. I would like to accept for Edwin B. Willis and thank Vincent Manelli for his inspiration. Those, uh, those nominated for the best achievement in art direction are the color production are... Hans Christian Andersen, Goldwyn, RKO. Richard Day and Clave, set direction, Howard Bristol. The Merry Widow... MGM, Cedric Gibbons, and Paul Gross. Set decoration, Edwin B. Willis and Arthur Cram. Moulin Rouge, Romulus, United Artist, Paul Sheriff. Set decoration, Marcel Verte. The Quiet Man, Argosy Republic, Frank Potling. Set decoration, John McCarthy Jr. and Charles Thompson. The Snows of Kilimanjaro, 20th Century Fox. Lyle Wheeler and John DeCure. Set decoration, Thomas Little and Paul S. Fox. The winners, in absence of the winners, James Wolfe will accept the award for Paul Sheriff and Marcel Vertes. Moulin Rouge. <laughs> This is the stuff that was left over. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, there you are. Thank you very much. On behalf of Mr. Paul Sheriff. <laughs> You're fine. Uh, Mr. Stewart, I just uh, wanted to ask you, uh, were you nominated for anything? Uh, no, boss. <laughs> were you nominated for anything? No, I wasn't nominated either, but... I say it doesn't make any difference whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. <laughs> I read that on Basil Rathbone shorts. <laughs> you, you, uh, you never have been nominated, have you? Bob? No, I don't know how they missed me, but they did. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, Jimmy, it seems like somehow, of course, there was a rumor going around last year that I might win an Oscar. But nobody paid any attention to it, so I stopped spreading it. <laughs> but it seems to me, Jimmy, that they just give awards like for, uh, for dramatic pictures and musical epics, while I, of course, do comedy. Really? <laughs> time I'll babysit for his twins, believe me. <laughs> the next two artists have between them had had about as much to do with all phases of the art of song as anyone in America. One of them made her movie debut this year, but it wasn't her first trip to town. The other is a two-time Academy Award winner. Here they are to sing the third nominated song, Peggy Lee and Johnny Mercer in Sing a Little Song. <laughs> Sing, sing, sing a little song with me. I know where that beside desire to see. 
But when you're drifting by the side of me, I want to sing a little song. Sing some sentimental melody about a chapel or an apple tree. About a couple living happily, and I'll be glad to sing along. It ain't the season that has me kind of silly. You really are a dolly, a dolly as a dilly. You got a reason to cut the thought of close to me. And we can do a very clever bit of close to how many you sing, sing, sing. It's getting late, my friend. We've got a most important date to set. I'm sure that we could make a great duet. And, and we could sing, sing a little love song. Perhaps we ought to think of something new. Well, maybe what the fellas wrote would do. Suppose we sing a little song. How's it was a little sweet. Something on the quiet side. Yeah, well, already I get starry-eyed. He's never sad because he's satisfied. As long as I can sing a song. Could be the music, but got him off his noodles. Could be the Wiener Schnitzel. Could be the Harper's Trudel. When we're together, I want to sing a serenade. And we, we could touch, touch it up a bit, make a hit. We, we do a bit to sing, sing, sing. It's getting late, my pet. How come we didn't win an Oscar yet? Those other singers would get all upset. Oh. So we just sing a little love song. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at the world's best television buy, RCA Victor's remarkable new way. Why is it such an outstanding value? Well, in the first place, it bears the proud name RCA Victor, a name that's been associated with every major television advance. Consequently, you can be certain that the Wayne incorporates the very latest developments in TV sets. It has RCA Victor's new automatic magic monitor circuit system that automatically brings in and holds the clearest, sharpest pictures. It brings you largest life 17-inch television on this huge deep image picture tube. And its handsome maroon cabinet is the last word in smart styling. Yet the Wayne still costs only $199.95. Think of it, RCA Victor television at the price of an ordinary set. And that price includes everything, federal excise tax and a full year warranty on the picture tube. Most important of all, when you buy any of the 22 fine RCA Victor models for 53, you can get America's finest installation and maintenance, available only to owners of RCA Victor television. Proper installation ensures that your RCA Victor will bring you the top performance that it was built to deliver. And RCA Victor's factory service contract offers you the only coast-to-coast -coast factory organization for installation and maintenance of TV receivers. This factory service is another reason why every year more people buy RCA Victor television than any other television. Here we are back in Hollywood for the awards of Achievement in the motion picture industry. And now to present the award for the best achievement by a studio sound department, Oscar winner Claire Trevor. Those nominated for the best achievement by a studio sound department are Breaking the Sound Barrier, London Films, United Artists. Hans Christian Andersen, Goldwyn RKO. The Promoter, Rank Ronald Neen, Universal International. The Quiet Man, Argosy Republic. With a song in my heart, 20th Century Fox. And the winner is... In the absence of a representative of London Film Sound Department, Stuart Granger will kindly accept the award for Breaking the Sound Barrier.
For half of London films, I thank you. Thank you. I'm a little worried about the New York end. Suppose we cut back there and make sure no one has gone south with any Oscars. Let's get back to New York and see what's cooking there. Well, thank you, Bob. No, nothing's happened to them. They're all here. Mercedes McCambridge has come along to help Freddie March guard them. As yet, of course, we've had no winners here. The only thing to report is another telegram from Johnny Green to please make it even more brief, if possible, in New York. So we'll do just that, Bob, and give it right back to you in Hollywood. Thank you. Thank you, Conrad. Thank you. You did very well back here in the laugh department. Thank you. We're not using the coaxial cable tonight. We're broadcasting this whole thing on a coast-to-coast -coast nervous system. <laughs> and to present the Oscars for short subjects, award winners Jane Wyman and Ray Milan. <laughs> Nominated for the best achievement in cartoon short subjects are Johann Maus, MGM, Fred Quimby. Little Johnny Jeff, MGM, Fred Quimby. Madeline, United Productions of America, Columbia, C. Stephen Buzesto. Pink and Blue Blues, United Productions of America, Columbia, Stephen Buzesto. Romance of Transportation, National Film Board of Canada, Tom Daly. And the winner is Fred Quimby for Johann Maus. Thank you, our friends, and I want to congratulate the directors of the Tom and Jerry cartoons, Bill Hanna and Joe Barbera. Thank you. Those nominated for the best achievement in short subjects won real are... Athletes of the Saddle, Paramount, Jack Eaton. Desert Killer, Warners, Gordon Hollingshead. Light in the Window, Art Films, 20th Century Fox, Boris Vermont. Neighbors, National Film Board of Canada, Mayor Kingsley, Tom Daly. Royal Scotland, Crown Films, British Information Service. The winner is... The winner in New York is Boris Vermont for Light in the Window. In short subjects, two reels are... Bridge of Time, London Films, British Information Services. Devil Takes Us, Theater of Life Production, Herbert Morgan. Now She Blows, Warner's Gordon Hollingshead. Waterbirds, Disney, RKO, Walt Disney. And the winner is... Walt Disney for Waterbirds. <laughs> He just happened to be in the wings. <laughs> I enjoyed that in the land. I wonder if he ever redeemed his typewriter. The fourth nominated song... The fourth nominated song is from High Noon, Do Not Forsake Me, Oh My Darling. It was sung in the picture by one of today's great balladeers who tells us that he still knows all the words. Tex Ritter and High Noon. <laughs> Forsake me, oh my darling On this I'm waiting Do not forsake me, oh my darling Wait, wait long Oh, the noonday train will bring Frank Miller if I'm a man, I must be brave And I must face a man who hates me 
Small eye of coward, craving coward. Small eye of coward in my grave. On quick, slow, and you dispose, and I lose my fair hat beauty. Look at that big hand move along, near in the high noon. He made a vow while in state's prison, vowed it would be my life or his. I'm not afraid of death, but oh, what will I do if you leave me? Not forsake me, oh my darling. You made that promise when we went. Do not forsake me, oh my darling. Although you're grieving, I won't be leaving until I shoot. Frank Miller did. Wait long, wait long, wait It's safe to say that every star present tonight has at some time or other made a screen test. Well, tonight we're going to ask you to make a screen test to prove that RCA Victor Television gives you the finest, most lifelike pictures possible. Now then, you should now be seeing two of me on these twin 21-inch RCA Victor Television receivers. They look alike, don't they? But they're not. One is a complete set, just like the one you'll want in your home. The other is not a TV receiver at all. It's just the shell of an RCA Victor receiver without the picture tube. And you're looking right through the picture opening at yours truly in person. Now, which one is the real set? Is it this one or this one? And which one is the real me? You see, the reason we're playing this game is to show you the kind of reception that makes the new RCA Victor television your best buy for 1953. Well, now that you've had a good chance to guess, I'll give you the answer. Ready? All right. That one is the real receiver. You don't believe me? Well, you can get one just like it at your RCA Victor dealers. This one here is the empty shell with the cutout picture frame. Well, folks, that shows you just how lifelike RCA Victor TV can be. Just what's behind the phrase, RCA Victor Television is five ways finer for 53. So see the new line of RCA Victor Television. Prices still start as low as $199.95. And remember, every year, more people buy RCA Victor than any other television. And so back from the commercial world to Tinseltown and the Academy Awards. Now to present the Cinematography Awards award winner, Teresa Wright. Those nominated for the best achievement in cinematography of a black and white production are The Bad and the Beautiful, MGM, Robert Surtees, The Big Sky, Winchester RKO, Russell Harlan, My Cousin Rachel, 20th Century Fox, Joseph Lachelle, Navajo, Bartlett Foster, Lippert Pictures, Virgil E. Miller. Sudden Fear, Kaufman, RKO, Charles B. Lang, Jr. The winner is Robert Surtees for The Bad and the Beautiful. Thank everybody very much. Those nominated for the best achievement in cinematography for a color production are Hans Christian Andersen, Goldwyn, RKO, 
Harry Stradling. Ivanhoe, MGM, F.A. Young. Million Dollar Mermaid, MGM, George J. Folsey. The Quiet Man, Argosy, Republic. Winton, Winton C. Hawk and Archie Stout. The Snows of Kilimanjaro, 20th Century, Leon Shamroy. The winners are Winton C. Hope and Archie Stout. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Miss Wright. You know, ever since the committee selected me to sing the fifth nominated song, I've been getting threatening letters from the composer. But I'm sure he'll change his mind when he finds out who they've selected to sing it with me. Here she is to join me in Am I Love from Son of Pale Face, Miss Marilyn Maxwell, right here. Wish I knew. All I know is I want a sigh when you're standing near. I get a humpty dumpty feeling. All I know is I want a sigh like I've never sighed before. Now, when, when you're, you're in love, love, they say you can tell. You're sick in the heart, and you never get well. Maybe they're right. I wish that I knew why I feel the way I do. Am I in love? Well, I'll well, leave it, it up to you. you. All I know is I want to dance when I look at you. I get a tippy-tappy feeling. All I know is I want to dance like I've never danced before. My head's in a whirl, my heart's in a spin. And if I'm in love, I love what I'm in. I don't know why I'm feeling this way, but the feeling feels okay. Am I in love? Am I in love? Well, I really couldn't say. My head's in a whirl, my heart's in a spin, and if I'm in love, I love what I'm in. I don't know why I'm feeling this way, but the feeling feels okay. Am I in love? Am I in love? Well, I leave it up to you. Thank you very, very much. That's the fifth nominated song. You know, when we called Walt Disney and asked him to present the music awards tonight, he said, uh, well, uh, we said, Walt, with all the songs you've commissioned for your pictures and what with Fantasia and all, you'd be the right man to do it. After all, think how much you've done for music in Hollywood. And his warm reply was, I would have thought it was the other way around. In any case, Walt fought his way through all the Oscars in his li living room to our stage tonight. One of the great theatrical inventors of modern times, Mr. Walt Disney, right here. Those nominated for the best music score of a dramatic or comedy picture are High Noon, Kramer, United Artist, Dimitri Tiomkin, Ivanhoe MGM, Nicholas Roska, Roska. <laughs> Miracle Fatima Warners, Max Steiner. The Thief, Popkin, United Artist, Herschel Burt Gilbert. Biba Zapata, 20th Century Fox, Alex North. And the winner is... Dimitri Tiomkin for High Noon. <laughs>
Thank you very much. Those nominated for the best scoring of a musical picture are Hans Christian Andersen, Goldwyn, RKO, Walter Scharf, uh, the Jazz Singer Warners, uh, Ray Heindorf and Max Steiner, the Medium, Transfilm, Lopert, Italian, Gino Carlo Mamati, Singing in the Rain, MGM, Lenny Hayden, the Song in My Heart, 20th Century Fox, Alfred Newman. The winner is... The winner is Alfred Newman for The Song in My Heart. Thank you very much. Say, Walt, before you go any further, let me let me explain something here. You know, you've seen these, uh, I know I'd like to clear up just one little point. Perhaps you've wondered, ladies and gentlemen, why, if the results are so secret, the orchestra always manages to play the appropriate music the very second the winner is announced. Well, it's very simple. For each award, our musicians have five different sheets of music panned out in front of them. The moment the winner's name is mentioned, they pull out the right sheet. In that split second, the conductor gives the downbeat, and away they go. Sounds a little frantic. Well, it is. We'll give you a chance to see it work. Thank you all. Those nominated for the best songs are I Am In Love, uh, from Son of Pale Face, Paramount, Music and Lyrics, Jack Brook. Because You're Mine, from the picture of the same name, MGM, Music, Nicholas Brodsky, Lyrics, Sammy Kahn. High Noon, Don't Forsake Me, My Darling. High Noon, Kramer, United Artists, Music by Dimitri, Dimitri Tiamkin, and <laughs> Ned Washington. Uh, Thumbelina from Hans Christian Andersen, Goldwyn RKO, Music and Lyrics, Frank Loser. Zing a little song, just for Paramount Music, Harry Warren, lyrics, Leo Robin. The winner is Dimitri Tiamkin and Ned Washington for Thank you, every one of you, very much. I feel, I, I feel like a mother of the wonderful twins. <laughs> now, now. How about that? You fellas are interested. I sell metal polish. <laughs> I was wondering. How about this terrific Academy Awards orchestra here in the pit? A very fashionable group. television tumor, the heart of a television set. Its job is to sort out the TV station you want from all the others that are on the air. Nowadays, this mechanism is more important than ever because more and more television stations are going on the air. This particular tuner is the newest development from the laboratories of RCA Victor. It's a powerful tuner. It's an accurate tuner. It's an automatic tuner designed to bring you sharper, clearer pictures than ever before. Because it's so powerful, because it's so accurate, you can count on this. If there's a picture in the air, this tuner will bring it in, clear and strong. And it doesn't matter whether that picture is on the new VHF or on the new UHF channels. And because it's fully automatic, a single flip of the dial brings and holds the picture sharp and clear. Click. There's your station automatically. So buy RCA Victor Television now with the confidence that you can get all the television programs from UHF and VHF in your area. And with this wonderful tuner, you'll enjoy the reception that only RCA Victor can give.
the reception that has made more people every year by RCA Victor than any other television. Thank you, the man with the money. That's RCA. NBC is a subsidiary of RCA, like CBS is a subsidiary of Arthur Godfrey. And here, and here to present the award for direction, an actress who has twice won the Academy Award, Miss Olivia de Havilland, ladies and gentlemen. Those nominated for the best achievement in directing are Five Fingers, 20th Century Fox, Joseph L. Mankiewicz. The Greatest Show on Earth, DeMille, Paramount, Cecil B. DeMille. High Noon, Kramer, United Artists, Fred Zinnemann. Moulin Rouge, Romulus, United Artists, John Huston. The Quiet Man, Argosy, Republic, John Ford. The winner is... In the absence of the winner, John Wayne will accept the award for John Ford. I keep remembering Stagecoach, Long Voyage Home, She Wore a Yellow Ribbon, and many other pictures that Mr. Ford directed me in. Naturally, as a ham, I'd remember the things that I was in, but I also remember How Green Was My Valley, and The Informer, Grapes of Wrath, and other pictures. It makes me very grateful that he asked me to be his proxy and accept this award, not to receive the money, but the award for him. I'll take it to his home on Odin Street, place he's lived in for 35 years, and proudly place this on his mantle with five other previous Academy Awards. Must be great to have a shelf like that. <laughs> are going to be presented by the head of the MGM Studios. However, he is not here in that capacity. He's here as a writer, an Academy Award winning writer, Dory Sheriff. The writer, whether he be dramatist, novelist, or screenwriter, is by nature a lonely man. Alone with his characters, his scenes, and his words. All the writers nominated tonight are for this short time not alone. They are with their peers and admirers. While from this list, three winners will appear. All of the nominees should be proud of their accomplishment. By their work and their aloneness, they have brought additional respect to their craft. Those nominated for the best motion picture story are the Greatest Show on Earth, DeMille Paramount, Frederick M. Frank, Theodore Austin John, and Frank Cabot. My Son John, Rainbow Paramount, Leo McCary. The Narrow Margin, RKO, Martin Goldsmith, and Jack Venner. The Pride of St. Louis, 20th Century Fox, Guy Trostler. The Sniper, Kramer, Columbia, Edna and Edward Anhalt. The winners are Frederick M. Frank, Theodore St. John, and Frank Cabot for The Greatest Show on Earth. Those nominated for the best screenplay are The Bad and the Beautiful, MGM, Charles Schnee. Five Fingers, 20th Century Fox, Michael Wilson. High Noon, Kramer, United Artists, Carl Foreman. The Man in the White Suit, 
Frank Ealing, Universal International, Roger McDougall, John Dighton, and Alexander McKendrick. The Quiet Man, Argosy Republic, Frank S. Nugent. The winner is Charles Schnee for the Band of Beautiful. nominated for the best story in screenplay are The Atomic City, Paramount, Sidney Baum, Breaking the Sound Barrier, London Films, United Artists, Terrence, Terrence Radigan, The Lavender Hill Mob, Rank Ealing, Universal International, T.E.B. Clark, Pat and Mike, MGM, Ruth Gordon, and Garson Kanan, Viva Zapata, 20th Century Fox, John Steinbeck. In the absence of the winner, Piper Laurie will accept the award for T.E.B. Clark, the Lavender Hill Mob. Thank you. On behalf of Mr. Clark, I thank you. Thank you. Now we hit the acting section. I noticed some nominees in New York. I think they might have gone home. We'd better check. Let's switch over to New York and see what's playing there. <laughs> well, thank you, Bob. All the nominees and possible winners are now here. We're all ready and willing. We just hope we'll come up with a, with a winner soon. And we all want to send our word to the beautiful ladies out there to stop worrying about television. They look simply lovely. Keep Johnny Green happy. I'll give it back to you in just a moment. We're swinging around to see a few of the nominees who have arrived. See Shirley Booth back there. Uh, Kim Hunter has arrived, a winner from last year. Uh, Mercedes McCambridge is still here. You look fine, Conrad. Very fine. <laughs> Looked a little like Bobby Driscoll there, didn't you think? Yeah, that's right, Bob. <laughs> Wonderful, Conrad. Present the I award for the odd. best supporting actor, a certain Mrs. Miniver, better known as award-winning actress Greer Garson. <laughs> Those nominated for the best performance by an actor in a supporting role are Richard Burton, my cousin Rachel, 20th Century Fox, Arthur Honeycutt, The Big Sky, Winchester, RKO, Victor McLaughlin, The Quiet Man, Argosy, Republic, Jack Poulant, Sudden Fear, Kaufman, RKO, Anthony Quinn, Viva Zapata, 20th Century Fox. And the winner? Ah, in the absence of the winner, Mrs. Anthony Quinn will accept the award for Anthony Quinn. Here. I'm sorry that Tony couldn't be here, but when I let him know today by telephone, I know he'll be a very happy man. Thank you very much. Those calls must be wonderful. <laughs> to present the award for the best supporting actress and Academy Award winning actor, Edmund Gwen. <laughs> Those nominated for the best performance by an actress in a supporting role are Gloria Graham, The Bad and the Beautiful, MGM, Jean Hagen, Singing in the Rain, MGM, 
Colette Marchand, Moulin Rouge, Romulus, United Artists, Terry Moore, Come Back Little Sheba, Hal Wallace and Paramount, and Thelma Ritter with the song in my heart, 20th Century Fox. The winner is Gloria Graham. Band to the <laughs> just made it. <laughs> I can understand it. To present the award for the best actor, the winner of the very first Academy Award for Acting, Miss Janet Gaynor. Nominated for the best performance by an actor are Marlon Brando, Viva Zapata, 20th Century Fox, Gary Cooper, High Noon, Kramer, United Artists, Kirk Douglas, The Bad and the Beautiful, MGM, Jose Ferrer, Moulin Rouge, Romulus, United Artists, and Alec Guinness, The Lavender Hill Mob, Rank Ealing, Universal International. In the absence of the winter, John Wayne will accept the award for Gary Cooper. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to see that they're giving this to a man who is not only most deserving, but has conducted himself throughout his years in our business in a manner that we can all be proud of him. Coop and I have been friends hunting and fishing for more years than I like to remember. He's one of the nicest fellows I know. I don't know anybody any nicer. And our kinship goes further than that friendship because we both fell off our horses into pictures together. Now that I am through being such a good sport, spouted all this good sportsmanship. I'm gonna go back and find my business manager, an agent, producer, and three name writer, and find out why I didn't get High Noon instead of Cooper. <laughs> well, I can't fire any of these very expensive fellas, but I can at least run my 1930 Chevrolet into one of their big black new Cadillacs. <laughs> gets pretty big laughs for a leading man. <laughs> Me, they rush. <laughs> I think we ought to have a little suspense right about in here. Maybe our sponsor will help us out. Remember when the family radio was so big it filled the whole corner of the room? In those days, if you wanted to listen, you came to the radio. Well, times have certainly changed. Today, folks are replacing those old-fashioned sets with something new in radio. Compact, powerful models for every room in the house. And that's why you'll want to see RCA Victor's tiny personal radios. So compact, they take up no more room than a telephone or a book. So light that you can take them easily from room to room. So handsome that they fit in anywhere. This one is RCA Victor's personal table model. It has amazing power and room size tone because this tiny little instrument has RCA Victor's famous golden throat tone system. And here's the newest thing in clock radios. RCA Victor's smartly styled personal clock radio that combines a powerful RCA Victor radio with an accurate Telecron electric clock. 
In the bedroom, this versatile little instrument wakes you up to music instead of the old-fashioned alarm. And it comes in handy in so many other places, too. In the kitchen, for example, and in the den or office. But you'll also want to enjoy radio out of doors, and RCA Victor's Super Personal is the handiest portable ever made. Six inches high, no heavier than a lady's handbag, it's easy to take everywhere, out gardening, at the beach, and on picnics. Look over RCA Victor's line of personal radios. They come in a wide range of colors. Whichever set you select, you'll own a radio designed for modern listening by RCA Victor, world leader in radio. <laughs> And now we're back from Camden, back to Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. And ladies, hold on to your seats to present the award for the best actress, an Academy Award winning actor, Ronald Coleman. <laughs> Those nominated for the best performance by an actress are Shirley Booth, Come Back Little Sheba, How Wallace Paramount, Joan Crawford, Sudden Fear, Kaufman, RKO, Betty Davis, The Star, Street Lobe, 20th Century Fox, Julie Harris, The Member of the Wedding, Kramer, Columbia, and Susan Hayward, With a Song in My Heart, 20th Century Fox. And the winner in New York is Shirley Booth. About 20 minutes ago, we had a wire from the coast saying we've been very good boys and we'd been upped in our time from a minute and 15 seconds to about 25 minutes for you to make a speech. Oh, well, it's... Popular win. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a very happy and a very lucky girl. My luck has many, many names. I won't attempt to list them all. All you have to do is look at the screen credits, and you'll know what I mean. I never could have done it alone. You know I couldn't. It's been a long, long climb. I guess this is the peak. But the view has been wonderful all along the way. I want to thank my old friends for their faith, my new friends for their hope, and everyone for their charity. note from Doug Jr. Hey, <laughs> Since the first Academy Award 25 years ago, our film record has become for people everywhere a treasury of memories, firmly tied to players who have given their special vitality to the screen and have received our industry's highest honor, the Academy Award. Behind these images stands a select company of creative artists and technicians, Academy Award winners all. Without their work, mute and unseen, the players. Without the players, unexpressed, 
the artists and technicians. And so, here in salute to all of their Academy Award-winning colleagues, are 24 whose talents and vital performances have been landmarks along the route of our treasured film memories. Pasteur, Paul Munich. The Grapes of Wrath, Jane Darwell. The Informer, Victor McLaughlin. Gentlemen's Agreement, Celeste Holt. Honorary Award, Jean Herschel. Mrs. Miniver, Teresa Wright. How Green Was My Valley, Donald Crick. Seventh Heaven, Janet Gaynor. Juvenile Award, Bobby Driscoll. Twelve O'Clock High. Dean Jagger. Kitty Foyle. Ginger Rocker. The Lost Weekend. Ray Milan. Reach His Own and the heiress, Olivia de Havilland. The More the Merrier, Charles Coburn. Mildred Pierce, Joan Cox. The Razor's Edge, Dan Baxter. A Double Life, Ronald Coleman. Johnny Belinda, Jane Wyman. All the King's Men, Roderick Crawford. Key Largo, Claire Trevor. Honorary Award, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. The Farmer's Daughter, Loretta Young. Miracle of 34th Street, Edmund Gwent. These 25 years have cast some long shadows. But shadows are never seen unless the sun is shining. Our film memories would mean far less for Hollywood not so brightly aglow tonight. Five outstanding motion pictures have been nominated as the best films of 1952. Here to make the presentation is a lady so well known as a founder of the Academy, so well beloved as America's sweetheart, Academy Award winner, Miss Mary Pitchford. Well, Mary, how do you like our birthday cake? How does it look? Wonderful, Bob. Simply wonderful. Well, it should. You poured the batter for that cake. You put the first icing on it. And now it's up to you to light up this year's candle, the 25th, by announcing the best picture of the year. Those nominated for the best motion picture are The Greatest Show on Earth, Mel Paramount, Cecil B. DeMille, High Noon Kramer, United Office, Stanley Kramer, Ivanhoe, MGM, Pandra S. Bourbon, Moulin Rouge, Romulus, United Office, The Quiet Man, Argosy, Republic, John Ford, and Marion C. Cooper. The winner is Cecil B. DeMille.
Mary, to take this from from you uh, means a great deal to me. You remember we were uh, juveniles together in Velasco's <laughs> Warrens of Virginia just about the time Noah started that craft. I forgot what it was. Pardon me while I braid my long white beard. <laughs> uh, on behalf of the thousands that it took to make the greatest show on earth, uh, I thank you for them, for the stars and the electricians, for the circus people, for their bravery. It was a very thrilling thing to see uh, stars like Betty Hutton and Gloria Graham and Cornell Wilde and Jimmy Stewart and Chuck Heston. Those people risked their lives, as did the thousands of others who uh, were, were in the circus and the, the audiences all through the, the trip. I, I thank you for all of them, because uh, I am only one little link in a, in a chain that uh, produced that picture, and I'm, I'm very happy for them. Thank you. Miss Mary Pickford. There you are, folks. All 25 candles on the cake lift. All we have to do now is sit down and have a slice. What a silver jubilee. Isn't that wonderful? Look at that. How are we doing on the screen, all right? It's awful when you work behind your back this way. That lights 25 candles, but don't leave, folks. Send out for some knockworths and relax. We have to get the 26th candle lit, the one to grow on. I'm not sure yet how we'll do it. We may have to call a man in from MIT, but we'll get it done. In the meantime, let's cut down below the stage to the busiest press headquarters in America at this time. That's downstairs. This 25th annual award of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences is a television world premiere brought to you by the RCA Victor Division of the Radio Corporation of America. Gentlemen, after that station break, we're going downstairs to the busiest press section in the world. Positively, this time. <laughs> this is very exciting. You must see this. And ladies and gentlemen, you are down now in the press room. Perhaps this is the first and biggest indication that we've had of what has happened in 25 years to the Academy Awards. These awards that used to start out as a little family party, a dinner party in which we honored our own, and now with the press of the world, 450 correspondents covering an event of this kind in Hollywood, with it being beamed around the nation, television, and with it being sent around the world by radio, here you see winners being congratulated. For the next set of awards, I'm going to turn the stage over to Mr. Brackett. This time, I wonder if you could make your applause a little more dignified. After all, back east, Mr. Brackett was known as an upstater. The people around that neighborhood, I wouldn't say they resented Christopher Columbus, but they did think it was a bit cheeky of him. So if possible, will you please all applaud and laugh? The president of the academy, Mr. Charles Brackett. This section of our program is devoted to the honorary awards, which were voted by the Board of Governors at a seven-hour meeting last night. As we already know who the recipients are, they are gathered backstage and won't have to walk that long mile. To present the award for special effects, Academy Award-winning actress Loretta Young. Ladies and 
gentlemen, the award for special effects is chosen by a screening committee and the Board of Governors. Uh, special effects consists of putting onto the screen uh, by miniature or trick photography those events which would be too dangerous or too expensive to reproduce in the ordinary fashion. This includes uh, buildings burning down and storms at sea, and however you may regret it, those shots, for instance, where the actor is bitten by the cobra. Mr. A. Arnold Gillespie will accept this year's award for special effects, which goes to Plymouth Adventure. <laughs> Would you like to say thank you, Mr. Gillespie? Thank you very, very kindly, and particularly on behalf of many of those who contributed so importantly to the winning of this award. I would like to mention Warren Newcomb, Irving Reese, Donald Jarris, Carol Shepard, Max Fabian, Harold Maserati, and others. We all express our thanks. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Miss Young. A really reliable motion picture company should own a camera. If you'll admit this, you'll find it hard to understand the Academy's delay in voting the next award. Our excuse is that we didn't want to be precipitous. We waited 25 years to make sure photography was not a passing whim. Last night, the Board of Governors drew up the following citation for the design, development, and manufacture of the motion picture camera which bears his name, for the introduction of equipment which has helped the artistic progress of films, and for his continued and dominant presence in the field of cinematography, the Academy votes an honorary award to George Alfred Mitchell. <laughs> Thank you very much. To present the award for the best foreign language film, it is a pleasure to welcome back two-time Academy Award winner, Louise Reiner. Jacques Bergerac will accept the award for the best foreign language film, which goes to a French picture that stars a moving glimpse of wartime childhood. Forbidden game. <laughs> to one of the beloved people of this town and one of the founders of the Academy. In his early days, he made pictures in the East, but 30 years ago, he came out here with only three stars to his name, Norma and Constance Talmage and Buster Keaton. He built a great company around them. Later, he formed other companies, United Artists for one, 20th Century, then 20th Century Fox. And all along the line, he was generous, generous with his money, generous with his friendship, and generous with his wisdom. His wisdom we have come to rely on. Someone has called him the Barney Baruch of the industry. Perhaps that is as good a description as any of Joseph M. Skank. <laughs> Mr. Skank is en route to New York, and he asked, has asked one of his friends to accept for him. Miss Gloria Swanson. Dear Gloria, 
Would you please convey to the Academy and the Board of Governors my sincere gratitude for the award it has conferred upon me. It is an honor I never dreamed I would ever receive when I helped to form the Academy 25 years ago. I am deeply moved. Signed, Joe Skank. Award goes to one of the longtime innovators of the industry who began by making the first full length documentary and one of the best. It was called Grass. His next was Chan, about elephants. And in that one, the screen widened out at a certain point. He made the first science fantasy. That was King Kong. He became interested in a new film process, Technicolor. Through him, Technicolor came into practical use. A few years ago, that nose for novelty started twitching again, and suddenly there was a film called This is Cinerama playing on Broadway. The ripples from it have come this way. They have generated quite a stir in our wonderful medium. In honor of all his innovations, the board has voted an honorary award to Marion C. Cooper. I just heard what was said. It isn't strictly accurate by any means. I'm a man that's just had a, been lucky on having wonderful partners. Shodzak really did a lot more than I did on Grass and Chang. And right down the line, I only had John Ford as a partner, Fred Kalmus as a great friend in Technicolor, and for Cinerama, my Fred Waller invented it. Lowell Thomas picked up the ball and ran with it. And there's a young man in this audience, Bob Bendick, that most of you have never heard of, that did far more of the production than I did. I want to thank all the great partners I've had in my life. Thank you. I just want to add, I'm still John Ford's partner. <laughs> to present the awards for scientific and technical achievement is Academy Award winning actress Anne Baxter. <laughs> the scientific and technical awards are divided into three classes. This year there are two class one awards. The first of these is for the introduction of Eastman color negative and Eastman color print films. Mr. Emery Hughes will accept the Oscar awarded to the Eastman Kodak Company. Thank you very much. An Oscar is awarded for the introduction of ANSCO Color Negative and ANSCO Color Print Film. Mr. Robert Young will accept for the ANSCO Division General Annalyn and Film Corporation. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. The Class II Award is for an improved method of color motion picture photography under incandescent light. The plaque will be accepted by Dr. Herbert Kalmus for the Technicolor Motion Picture Corporation. Members of the Academy Board of Governors, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very proud to accept this great honor for and on behalf of the Technicolor Company, but more particularly for the technical staff of the Technicolor Company, which staff for some 30 odd years have been endeavoring in some small way to help this great industry to meet every challenge. And I'm sure the industry will continue to meet those challenges. Class 
three awards in the form of honorable mention were voted to the following. To the projection, research, and still departments of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer for an improved method of projecting photographic backgrounds. To John G. Frayne and R. R. Scoville and the Westrex Corporation for a method of measuring distortion in sound reproduction. To the Photo Research Corporation for creating the spectra-color temperature meter. To Gustav Jurush for the design of the robot automatic film slicer. To Carlos Rivas of Metro Goldwyn Mayer for the development of a sound reproducer for magnetic film. On this 25th anniversary, the Academy wishes to state publicly its debt to the vast core of scientists and technicians who have brought so much to the picture industry through the years, and who even now are assaulting new visual and sonic frontiers of knowledge. For the entire Academy, thank you, gentlemen. I told you earlier that the Academy had once voted a miniature Oscar to Bob Hope. It was given for a variety of reasons. Since then, so many other reasons have piled up. His enormous contribution to the laughter of the world, his service to this industry, his devotion to the American premise, that the Academy had to do something. Last night, we had two choices. We could either give him the corner of Hollywood and Vine, or we could vote him a richly merited Oscar. We are practical people. I wonder if Bob Hope would come out here and help me clear up this table. I know this is a joke. You take it back after a while. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. I can't... Well, this does it to me. Wait, I'll go back and check with my writers. I'll be right back. <laughs> I can't... I don't know what to say about this. I, I just want to tell you that I'm flabbergasted. And uh, this is just, just a... <laughs> what about it, man? <laughs> I just want to tell you that this is wonderful. Uh, this is really what I dreamed of when I got off the bus in front of the Knickerbocker Hotel. <laughs> Fifteen years ago. Fifteen years. Now I know how the Republicans felt when they got there. <laughs> I, Charles, I just want to thank the Board of Governors of the Academy. This is just, uh, I don't, I, I don't believe this. <laughs> I'm just very appreciative and believe me and sincerely, I will try to live up to what this means in the future. Thank you very much. Now to light up that 26th candle, the one to grow on. That's for the Irving Thalberg Award. It's an honor not given each year. When given, it goes to a man with an extraordinarily high record for motion picture production. To present it tonight, the first Thalberg Award winner and the only man who has won it three times, Mr. Darrell Zanuck. Thank you very much. It's a great honor and a great distinction tonight to present the Irving Thalberg Award to a man who certainly needs no introduction. When I came to this business 25 or 26 years ago, he was a great name. He's kept pace and he's forged ahead. The winner tonight of the Irving Thalberg Award, C.B. DeMille.
Now it's, uh, it's a triple honor to receive the Irving Fallberg Award from a man who has received it three times. We both knew and admired and loved Irving Fallberg for the many great things that he did for this art. The award, as I understand it, is for work done the past three years. And uh, that includes two dreams that I was able to realize in the past three years, Samson and Delilah and The Greatest Show on Earth. Samson, that, that showed the, that man's strength comes from above, and The Greatest Show on Earth, which is a happy picture made to make people thrill and enjoy, and millions of kids all over the world who haven't even seen circuses respond, as Lincoln said to Barnum, laughter is the best medicine. Now understand that there are almost 50 million people listening who are attending this uh, ceremony tonight through television and radio. I, I want to thank them for the way they receive the motion picture industry as an art. The way they have stood by us and uh, loved us. When we do good work, they respond. When we do poor work, they uh, chastise us by their absence. And I want to thank them personally for their reception, particularly, I'm going to be selfish, of these two pictures, these two dreams that uh, were brought to life by so many people in this industry, by, by sharing those dreams, they have, they have brought me this award, which I shall keep close to me all of my life. I'm very grateful. God bless you. the candles, all the candles and the parties. I'm not flustered. I feel all right. The party's practically over for this year. Let's say goodnight to New York. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Well, after getting caught short on that last shot, I played safe this time. I have a little support. For the people here in New York, for Kim Hunter, for Freddie March, for myself, it's been a great evening because our Shirley Booth won the award. <laughs> Thank you all in Hollywood, and good night. <laughs> I can't tell you how what a great night it's been for me, ladies and gentlemen. This turned into my night. CB might have won too, but this is four to me. This is a great thing, and I don't. Is this the same size as Crosby's? That's all. I, like. I wonder if he's still up. I got to run over there and check with him. Say, I don't think I know that we're all indebted to RCA for this wonderful help tonight, and we're also indebted to Johnny Green for a wonderful job of production and direction here. Where's Johnny Green? of the country just to take a look at you, John. I know the work you've done. You've lost about 20 pounds in the last couple of weeks. Well, and let me tell you, it. don't put it back on. You look great. May I say one? Yes. I just want to take this opportunity to say a very special word of thanks to Bob Welch, Bill Bennington, Bill Caden, and uh, Dick Clemmer in New York, all of the NBC production staff, for this fabulous television job you've seen tonight. Thank you. Fine, John.
I think that's very wonderful when they give credit like that, but I don't feel that way. All that I am or whatever I hope to be, I owe to my dramatic coach, Willie Sutton. <laughs> Let's give a big hand to a wonderful guy and one of our great actors who's been doing the color on this show tonight, Ronald Reagan, right here. Ronnie, come out here. Thank you, and of course, Paul Douglas is handling it by air and did a great job, I understand. That's the end of 25 years, ladies and gentlemen. We'll have to break it up now. All these people have to get out of the theater and start on the next 25. Good night. RCA, the Radio Corporation of America, and RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, have brought you the television world premiere of the 25th Annual Awards of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences.